Welcome to UBC's Next Big Thing. Hi, I'm Rosemary Jean Thompson. My guest today is Assistant Professor Leighton Schnellert, and you are a specialist, I'd say, around adolescent literacy. Tell us a little bit about that. My work stems from my background as a middle and secondary school teacher, and as I began in the early 90s, there wasn't much, much research in my area, mm. and so as I was working with students and seeing the kinds of challenges they had and the potential they had, I really felt like I needed to do something. And it was just at the time where um, research and practice was moving into my area. And so I was kind of a lone voice um, in my school, working with these students who really wanted to succeed, but their literacy was holding them back. And so I posed questions and tried things out and experimented and collaborated with other colleagues and um, built practices that really made a difference. You talked about especially that they really do want to succeed, adolescents, they want to do well, but if they've got some of these literacy roadblocks, what, what were you noticing and how did you initially deal with the issue? Hmm. Well, at that age, especially in the secondary years, students already have a sense that this is a block for them and mm -hmm. so a lot of it was emotional and behavioral where kids would shut down. Kids who had terrific ideas and who were successful at some point suddenly I asked them to read or give them a task and I'd lose them mm -hmm. and these were like really interesting kids with some of the best ideas and so it took me a little while to figure out that the reason they were putting up roadblocks was because they had fear around reading and a real psychology behind them around I can't do this I don't mm -hmm. know what to do and so I had to build some relationships to find out what was the breakdown point and then try to understand that for most of those students it was it actually had to do with reading is like voodoo to them they don't know what they don't know it must be some magical thing that you must do to be successful so to make reading explicit and try to f help them understand what reading was was really a big step for them uh, how much of the adolescent population would you say is affected by this challenge first of all there's a group of students with significant learning challenges um, and they hit roadblocks but then perhaps the majority of students have a challenge in some subject area reading. Mm -hmm. And so a student who's really successful in English and the humanities, what might hold them back is their literacy in content areas like math and science. Their understanding is fine, but their potential is much greater. And so by working with them to help them build their understanding of literacy, almost every student I've worked with has increased their performance. So what do you suppose is the key to successful literacy for these well, for anybody, but specifically these adolescents, the, the adolescents, there must be something that says this is what's going to be help mm. them be successful. What what is that? I'd love to say it's one thing. Right. It's many things: okay. background knowledge, um, accessing who they are to be successful, comprehension strategies for some kids, decoding for lots of kids, higher level thinking. Oh. But if I was going to pick one thing that has an impact across groups of students, it's self-regulated learning, helping them understand their strengths, helping them define a task and interpret a task and then building a plan about how they're going to approach something, draw on their strategies to be successful. So it's putting the ownership in the student. I was going to say actually equipping them. You're equipping giving them, them the tools to yeah. be successful and knowing that they can do it, that they are capable of doing it. Lots of research talks about metacognition and so self-regulated learning is not just knowing and learning about mm -hmm. your learning but doing something about it. Wow. And so helping students develop their strategies, interpret tasks, see themselves be successful and and then actually attribute their success to what they did versus I was lucky or I wasn't lucky. It's actually what did you do? What's it asking of you? And then um, adjusting to be successful. Well, I'm so glad you've done this research because I'm going to admit something here. I was a challenged reader and I had difficulty right up until adulthood and mm. still struggle mm. a little bit with it. So I'm so thrilled that you've been able to do that. I also want to say that you've recently received an award for all yeah go ahead come on it's okay that you've received an award for your um, contribution in the research that you've done can you talk a little bit about that sure just yesterday I was in Calgary the Canadian Education Association which is 1892 1891 so as old as education is in Canada this association is they have an early career research award and so this year I received the Pat Clifford Award and so I received this um, Early Career Research Award for my work in adolescent literacy. Wow, how did that make you feel to be recognized that way? Humbled, I'm humbled, I'm, I'm, early, I'm three years into my career, I'm 25 years into teaching but I'm, I'm a pretty new researcher and so to be recognized that this understanding that what I'm doing is having an impact, it's, it's really exciting to 
to be recognized for having an impact across the Arctic and Western Canada. And I think what this does is it makes researchers like myself accessible to more people. And uh, I was sitting at a round, we were in round tables at this conference, and um, there were rep representatives from every province at my wow. table. And so we're all sharing ideas. And then I came up to the stage and gave a little six minute talk about my work and came back down. And I could feel the shift at my table as people talked about, oh, well, that's not so hard. I, I never thought of it that way. And so being recognized, hopefully, is just an avenue to sharing my work and being connected so that folks can draw those resources into their own um, research and practice and make a difference. Excellent. Oh, well, I know that people are already connecting with you here locally in the Okanagan, and I'm sure they'll want to find out more about what you do and get some of your resources and just uh, your knowledge. And that wraps up this episode of UBC's Next Big Thing. Until next time, I'm Rosemary Jean Thompson. Mm -hmm.